Hello? Quick, jump cut! Cut it! Shut it all down! It broke! I messed up the fade. Hey, what's up? We're live streaming. You may have noticed uh, something's different up there on the top left. I've taken the time to try to figure out how to at least put some kind of chat overlay on there. Just thought we'd try something new out, you know. And, uh, of course, you know, let me know if you can, of course, hear me and all that. That's kind of important. Hello! I'm seeing hellos in chat. This is cool. Yeah, so, you know, I fooled around. I'm trying to upgrade the presentation a little bit. Uh, hopefully you guys can see yourself on TV up there. You know, did some, uh, it's not too tough. There's video tutorials out there, but... Yeah, so, how you guys doing tonight? Hope you're doing pretty well. The unfortunate thing now is since the last time I've streamed, Twitch has started this, like, 30-second delay thing. So, the chat actually might kind of help you know where I'm at <laughs> in terms of what I can see in chat. So, you know, it kind of actually serves a purpose, too, I guess. So, cool. Everyone looks like uh, you can hear me. Got game audio and stuff. It's playing a little song right now if you can't hear anything, but... Uh, we're going to be playing some Bit Trip Runner 2 tonight. I don't know how long we'll be going. You know, probably a couple hours. I like this game a lot, so uh, I've actually just cleared out my save, and this is just like... Yeah, it's a little slow on the chat, but that's not really... Like, I can't do much about that. <laughs> so, you know, uh, that's just Twitch delaying things by, like, 30 seconds. Uh, for what it's worth, it is updating, like, as soon as I see it in the chat. So, you know, that's that's as good as I can do. I can't really fix Twitch or anything. And I tried to put it in a place where it would be out of the way, because we're mostly running to the right. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> hopefully Today's top left will be fine. is brought to you in part by Sir Roosh's After Dinner Mints. What a flavor! Didn't mean to talk over Charles Martinet there. I'm Charles Martinet, and now it's time for Bit Trip Presents Runner 2, Future Legend of Rhythm Alien. Man, this is a great game. I love that Charles Martinet does that voiceover too. It's really cool. Alright, so man, I've got to set all this. Uh, I'm actually going to have to shrink some. It's fine. Brightness is fine. Twitch, really? Does Twitch Turbo really have less delay? That would be kind of crazy. Twitch does weird things. I can't actually watch Twitch if I'm just connected. Well, let's watch this. When last we left Commander Video, his courageous contingent of charismatic compatriots was in hot pursuit of the fiendish Timbletot as they chased him into a realm above realms called the Hypersphere. It is at this moment, as if from nowhere, that a nefarious reality unfusion beam blindsides these five fearless friends. The always imperturbable Commander Video, shielding his elite assemblage of exceptional allies, takes the brunt of the blast and is sucked into an unknown dimension. A land of wondrous imagination, found only at the apex of light and matter. A wavelength of the optical spectrum opened by the maniacal Timbletot to trap and enslave our gallant protagonist. Confused and companionless, our hero ponders his current position. The only thing that remains clear to him now is that he has fallen prey to a vulgar scheme full of villainy, which he must vanquish. It is, this writing is awesome, isn't it? I love it. Yeah, this is, it's got so much charm. It is just oozing charm out of every orifice, which is kind of gross, but that's literally what it's doing. Um, so this is Bit Trip Runner. Yeah, I was talking about Twitch. It does weird things. I can't watch streams if I try to just connect directly as me. I have to actually route my connection through either the UK or Germany to be able to watch streams at all. It's, it's kind of strange, but... Okay, so uh, real quick, I'm going to show off a bit. I have no idea where I am on the leaderboards. I used to be number one at one point. If you don't believe me, there's actually a screenshot on my Facebook somewhere. Let's see where I am. Uh, empty. Okay, fifth. Nice. I haven't fallen too far since then. Let's see. Let me try to get... Uh, here we go. Top scores. Yeah, so... That looks like I've been beaten by about six million points, which is, you know, quite a bit, but it goes pretty fast, so... There we go. Yeah, like, some people don't have trouble watching Twitch streams, but I just do. I don't really know what the issue is, if it's my ISP or even really what it is at all, so... You know, it's just kind of something I just route my connection through Britain and get British commercials, and we're fine. So, uh, but yeah, just to show, I've pretty much completely cleared out my save data. We're at zero on everything, so 
we're gonna be starting fresh um let's see i'm i've tried to think about how i'm gonna do this uh, i'm probably not gonna do a hundred percent like because you have to get keys and then go back to unlock costumes and stuff it's kind of a pain and uh, also takes a while the so, uh, you know, we're probably not going to be doing that, but I think what I'm going to do is just go through each of the levels and we'll get perfects, which if you don't know what that means, you basically just collect gold bars as you're running through. That's about all it is. So, um, hello. Nice people are coming out. I see I'm Garrett out there. How you doing, man? Um, so let's just get started. We're going to do on Rather Hard. We got three difficulties. Rather Hard is, of course, the one that I'm playing. Yeah, there was a Bit Trip Runner 1. And uh, it's not very good. Like, it's okay, the gameplay's fine, but the difficulty just spikes incredibly. Um, I beat it on the perfect difficulty over the course of a couple days, and I'm probably never going to pick it up again. So anyway, let's go. we got a little cutscene, so we'll let Charles Martinet speak. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Commander Video plummets back through the layers of a once-known reality and into the soft, bulbous bosom of a new one. Unsure of the outcome, but retaining optimism, our hero is guided to his skyward perch and thus begins his stay in the Welkin <laughs> Literally Wonderland. weep. I, honestly, I would believe you. It's really frustrating playing it on perfect difficulty. Uh, because if you miss one gold bar at all, you have to start over. And that gets really frustrating with some of the placements and stuff. So this is Runner 2. Uh, as is in the name, we are running. And we're running a lot. We jump over enemies, collect gold bars. That's the game with uh, different, you know, various changes as we go on. It's kind of hard to pay attention to chat and sort of play this at the same time. So I may miss... Uh, some of your messages if you're, you know, getting to me while we're in the middle of a level. Right now, all you can do is jump. Lots of things will be unlocked later, but uh, we're on the first level, so they just kind of let you jump. You know, that's about it. And of course, I am on hard, so you may see some formations. If you played this on, like, normal or something, uh, you may see some enemy formations that look a little tougher than you would uh, kind of expect, but... That's the nature of the difficulty. And of course, the, you know, the music going along with what you're doing is so good. This game, like, it's just mesmerizing. Like, even if I'm not playing it, I can just, like, sit there and just watch somebody else play it. I just pull up a video on YouTube and just watch it for, like, an hour. Just listen to the music and everything. It's really cool. And then, of course, when you get a perfect... You know, the bullseye thing comes up and you gotta shoot yourself in the middle of it. You get a perfect plus uh, if you can land inside the bullseye. So, just a perfect otherwise. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about perfect plus too much. If I get it, great. Uh, otherwise, I don't really care. Yep, art style is great, the music is great. This is a fantastic game. It's really simple and premise, and when I first heard it, I'm like, you know, I don't really know if I'm going to get into it or not. But I played it, and then immediately was hooked to the point where... Ooh, that was close. To the point where I, you know, got myself up to number one on the leaderboards. So, I spent quite a lot of time with it. Uh, this is Bit Trip Runner 2, uh, or its full title is Bit Trip Presents Runner 2 Future Legend of Rhythm Alien, uh, if you'd like to <laughs> look all that up, but pretty much everyone just calls it Runner 2. And we're still in easy mode territory right now, so it might be a little bit boring starting out, you know, but uh, it'll pick up, trust me. Oh yeah, and this is the part where since we can't do anything right now, we're just forced to run. But it looks kind of neat. Yes, this game is much easier than Runner 1, definitely. Um, in a good way, though. Like, and not that it's taken the challenge out. The challenge is still there. But uh, it's like I said, when I finished Runner 1, this game is actually designed to be fun. So, <laughs> you know, Runner 1, I don't know if it was or not. But this one is way better. Uh, Runner 1 didn't have checkpoints, for example. Um, the, the levels in general were actually longer, too, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's actually pretty tough, so, uh, Runner 1, if you can get, I got it on sale for, like, three bucks or something like that, so I guess it was worth that much, but, 
Uh, you know, otherwise, I think runner two is probably the way to go. You don't really need the first one. Oh, now we can glide as we jump. So we're slowly going to be introduced more new mechanics. But, you know, like I said, it just stays really simple at the beginning. Uh, yes, this is on Steam. Uh, it's downloadable on PS3 and I think on 360 too. I'm not sure on that, uh, but it's definitely on Steam. It's been in a handful of sales, and I think it's also been in some humble bundles as well. So you can usually find it for a pretty good price. But you know, whatever you uh, whatever you pay for it, it's probably worth it. So <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it too much. And from what I know, the Steam version is fine. Uh, it doesn't seem to have any issues or anything. I've never played it myself because you know I have it on PS3, but. Seems to be all right from what I've heard. Right, yeah, that that is exactly. I think Fiery Lionheart got it uh, just right. If you if you mess up in Runner Two, you feel like you actually messed up, and Runner One just has so much unfairness in it, so many jumps that you kind of just have to know it's coming in order to get through it. So it becomes this frustrating bang your head against the wall trial and error type thing. And uh, it's just not as fun. So runner two, the difficulty is very well handled, I think. And yes, you can play as a whole bunch of different characters. We'll be unlocking them as we go on. So I'll probably switch up uh, as we unlock new ones just to keep things fresh. I'm, st I'm just kind of waiting until we actually get more stuff to do, because I'm just running and jumping. Oh yeah, we've got a cart down there. I'll actually get that later, just to show what those look like. You actually can't get a perfect and collect the cart at the same time, because it like warps you out. Uh, but we'll see what that is. I'll probably get those as I see them. Uh, I think they're actually marked on the map, so it should be easy to find them. Like on the main world map and stuff. Yeah, I, I love the way it sounds. It's just I can't look away, you know? Yeah, there is uh, more to this game than just running and jumping, I promise. Uh, later on, we're going to unlock more stuff. This is just kind of the beginning. Uh, we're gonna, we actually can't even do most of the stuff right now. It won't let us. But, you know, we're going to have to slide under stuff. We're going to have to block stuff. We're going to have to kick stuff. We'll be kind of sliding on rails and stuff. So, you know, there, there's all kinds of things you can do. But um, it's just, you know, kind of at the beginning, that's really all it is. Let's see if we can pick up. Uh, the retro card in this one actually it doesn't look like it is marked on the map, so I may just miss most of them. It doesn't really matter. It's funny, I actually uh, sort of plotted out a quote unquote speed run for this. Uh, I never really did anything with it, but you know, the goal is to kind of just don't get perfects on any levels so you can skip the cannon. At the end, and uh, also there are, I think, six levels in total where grabbing the cart is actually faster than completing it normally. So all in all, it's like two and a half hours or something, but, um, you know, like I said, I never really did anything with it because it's kind of just an auto-scroller, so. So this is the uh, retro levels. They're a little bit tougher, but they have a pretty cool little theme to them. And you can't really see the hearts at the top left because they're going to be covered by the chat. Sorry about that, but uh, these levels are pretty neat. You get three tries, so... And you don't get anything for collecting all of the gold either. But, you know, it's just something to do. And as you can see, there are 25. That's the first one. And also, I'm probably not going to get all of them, just because I don't know off the top of my head where all of them are. But uh, hopefully we can introduce something new soon, either in this level or the next one. I think this one has costumes for the first time. Yeah, I see the... It says find a treasure chest. Oh, we can also slide, so there's our second element. You can slide really quickly, in fact.
And I don't think, yeah, we can't actually slide and jump yet, but that does become a thing later, where you're sliding actually in the air. It's pretty neat. And you can also jump over checkpoints. You get an extra 50,000 points, but of course, you know, it's a little more risky because you have to start over all the way if you get hit. Costume! Yep, it's our first collectible. This would be included, I guess, if you were trying to get 100% of everything, so... Um, but like I said, we're not going to be getting all of them. It is silly, and it is in a good way. Uh, it's very lighthearted, and it's got a good sense of humor. It doesn't take itself too seriously, you know? It, I'm a sucker for games like that in general anyway, so... Uh, you know, it's kind of hard to go wrong there. And, of course, we can get to our uh, costumes, hitting square, going to characters. And there are more that we can unlock. We start, actually, with Commander Girl, or Command Girl video as well. And, uh, of course, more characters to unlock. But we'll stick with the main dude. And we got a new costume, so I might as well put it on. Got the Walkman and headphones. Nice touch. And it's also worth mentioning, I'm doing a local recording of this separately. So I kind of have to stream at lower quality because my internet connection isn't exactly the best. I live in backwoods, Kentucky. So, you know, not a whole lot of great ISPs out here with super speeds or anything. But um, I'm kind of recording like a separate, you know, um, higher quality local video that's going to go up on YouTube. So hopefully it'll look better up there, too. And just the way it sounds, I love that little beat right there. That's so cool. It already starts to pick up a little bit. You got the flaming, you know, rocks coming at you or whatever you got to slide under. So it's starting to actually get to the point where if you're not really paying attention, they could actually get you here and there. Ah, oh, man, I'm really... <laughs> I used to be pretty good at that, because uh, you have to be in order to get the top scores. Uh, no, there's no limit to your slide. Just as long as you're pressing down, you will slide. Uh, right now, you can't slide in the air. You can do that later. But if you're on the ground, as long as you're holding down, you'll slide. So that's another great thing. You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. It's just as long as you're pressing the button, you know, you'll do what you mean to. Yeah, I'm uh, glad you, you know, think the streaming quality is all right. Um, I'm at one megabit per second, if, you know, for those of you out there who actually care about that kind of thing, because that's about all the upload speed I have, so... Uh, that's, that's decent quality. I think YouTube HD is 2 megabits per second, at least it used to be. I don't know if it still is anymore or not, but, you know, so it's, it's relatively close, but... I like tracing these things with the right analog stick, too. You learn to get really good at those as you go for higher scores, too. And of course, it's always fun to look at the things in the background, too. The big whatever that thing is, I don't know, with the monocle or whatever. <laughs> it's that stuff. There's all kinds of stuff like that in the background that unfortunately you can't really see while you're playing because you got to focus on what you're doing. But uh, also, this game is actually really hard to play and talk at the same time. So uh, as we get later on and things actually get difficult, uh, we might <laughs> cut back on that just a little bit during the levels. But doing okay so far. I mean, it is still just the. Uh, first world. 
Nice, right in the middle. And I love how your legs like stick out at the end. That's such a good touch. Yeah, it's a high class. It is. It's just like the Super Mario World is. And that's probably a reference, to be honest. Kind of the whole map system. And of course, you know, Charles Martin A. I mean, that's <laughs> that's Mario right there. So, a giant octopus, maybe. I don't know what's underneath the clouds. Uh, someone asked about Donkey Kong Country 2. Perhaps. Um, I don't know. It's harder for me to get 100% on that because I don't know it anywhere near as well. But, um, yeah, it's definitely something I thought about. All right, now we can kick. So we're going to have these uh, big stop signs that put up walls in front of us that we get to karate kick our way through. Just like that. Nice. And there's kind of a, uh, a window. Like, you hit the square button and he kicks for like half a second. So as long as you hit it just before you get there, you don't have to be holding it or anything. It's a little weird at first, but you get used to it pretty quick. And sliding and kicking also becomes a thing later. Uh, right now you can't do that either. You just go up if you try to do that. So already we've got a little bit of variety. And I'm getting these little rewards. They don't do anything. Uh, they're kind of just like little achievements within the game. You don't get anything for them really. But uh, there are trophies to this, which I think I've gotten them all. So you won't see any of those here. Nice little rhythm there. Yeah, it, this, it is, this game definitely is a lot easier on the difficulty curve. Uh, if you thought Bit Trip, uh, well, you played Bit Trip Beat, you said, but that's not quite like a Bit Trip Runner, but, you know, if you played something like that, you thought it was a cool idea, but could have just used some work, get this, uh, because that's, it seems like they exactly, I'm going to go to some of these other levels I haven't been to, uh, it seems like that's exactly what they were going, which is basically Bit Trip Runner, but improve the things that needed improving, you know? Already getting a little tricky there. Some of the optional levels, it seems like they actually get quite a bit harder than the regular ones. Because this one, you had to have like a certain amount of gold uh, in order to unlock it. So, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you, you had a gate to get to it. So they're going to make things a little bit tougher. Oh, looks like another retro card there. I probably won't go back for it. And yeah, I didn't mention this before, but if you see a thing like that with a green arrow and a red arrow, the red arrow denotes the harder path. So if you're just trying to get through it, you can take the green one, but if you feel like having some fun, you can take the hard path, which I'm pretty much always going to do. And it also usually leads to costumes and stuff. Uh, the stuff that you can do later just kind of unlocks as the game progresses. Uh, as you'll start new levels, sometimes you'll get a little tip that like gives you kind of a tutorial, like press square to kick or whatever. And uh, that's when you can start doing it. So they just happen as the game progresses. Basically, after the first world, you have just about everything that you need. Just kind of automatically. You don't have to do anything for it. Don't have enough gold for that yet. Oh, I did get a new costume. I should have looked at that, but oh well. I haven't seen my name on any of these yet. High scores for World 1 suck because you have to play on easy. And I actually couldn't get them right now if I wanted to. Uh, because you have to dance, which you don't have unlocked yet. And that gets you more points. Because unfortunately the high scores aren't separated. Like there's not an easy leaderboard, a medium leaderboard, hard leaderboard, stuff like that. Um... It's just all combined. So on the early levels like these, you actually don't get as many points for jumping over obstacles as you do taking the time to dance. So you want to actually play it on easy because that'll give you more time to rack up the bonus points. So it's a bit of a balance. It kind of works out that like the middle levels you want to play on medium and uh, the harder, like the later levels you want to play on hard because there's way more obstacles that you would get points from dancing. It's kind of this delicate balance that I'm not sure I like. I kind of wish they would just have separate leaderboards, but oh well. Alright, 
50 out of 50. Doing good. Oh, we haven't been on too long. Uh, I don't have a... Okay, it's, uh, it's 7.26, so we've been on it for about 26 minutes, roughly. But, you know, haven't missed too much. It's basically this. This is what the game is. So, you know, you can jump in at just about any point. It might actually be better to jump in later so you can uh, kind of get to the stuff where there's more varied obstacles. And actually, we can go get this now. And you also can't see the level names, which is kind of a travesty. I'm um, doing the game a bit of a disservice there. But you can, yeah, you can see them when they come up here. The level names are at the bottom in kind of the red section. Uh, some of the level names are really good. bird flying in the background there. You can see the factory in the background, burger mouth. That's going to come up again later, too. Always take the hard path. Yeah, I kind of, uh, I kind of found the, f the same thing with the first game. Uh, you know, the 8-bit graphics are kind of cool, but at the same time, things kind of blend in quite a bit. Uh, things that look like they might be in the background or that you don't even see just come up and hit you out of nowhere. And again, that kind of plays into the unfairness aspect of it. But again, Runner 2 way better in that regard. Yeah, especially uh, if you... Yeah, if your eyes are tired or it's late at night, <laughs> don't play Runner 1 because you'll just get frustrated. So, new thing, now we can spring. Uh, whenever we get to springboards, we just hold up as we approach it. I really need to be looking at these costumes. I keep forgetting. I just want to play the game. I'm, I like it so much. And the little red crosses, I haven't really talked too much about that. Uh, they kind of upgrade the mode. Like, they make uh, the points worth more. Like, the points double every time you get one of those. And all of them are required to get perfects anyway. So, you know, we're just collecting them. Two people with SS2. Was that was that a collaboration or is that I don't know, does that stand for something or just curious? Nice. I love those little formations of gold bricks there. And the springs in this game are actually really good. That's that's one complaint I had about the first game. It had springs like this as well, but some of them you actually had to wait until the last second in order to get the spring, otherwise you would actually miss a gold block. So, it's really cheap in that regard. I hated springs in that game. They're so much better here. Uh, you always just, uh, just want to hold up when you approach them. Don't confuse people. That's rude. That's, that's not a nice thing to do to people. But, you know, I guess the colors help, so, you know, you're in the clear. I think it's just evidenced by the fact that I actually haven't gotten hit yet, I haven't missed a goal uh, block yet, that this game is just so much more better made than the original one was. Oh, we have a hidden path here, I guess we can take it. This will let us get to the key vault, I think. Oh, I hit something. I was I got confused because the pads kind of like cross over there. Well, that was the first got hit. So I think we just do this. I think we I think I was on the right track. Just 
kind of switches over, which is weird. Oh, it doesn't even matter. I could just skip the first one. Alright, see you... Sorry about the Marty Fox Sinatra. Nice. See ya. Thanks for coming out. Alright, so yeah, I got the alternate exit there, uh, which means we're gonna get to go up to the key vault. This is where you would kind of go when you want to get 100%, because you have to go here in order to unlock the keys, and then you have to uh, go back into the previous levels and collect the keys there in order to get the costumes that they're, they're kind of locked behind it. So that's where 100% gets a little bit long, and that's where I'm going to kind of draw the line. I'm not really going to revisit those previous levels, but, you know, might as well at least check the level out. The key vaults are actually uh, usually pretty difficult, too. I like the hill in the background of this one. I can't tell if he's really happy or if he's like really sinister and planning something. I'm not sure. So you can see already things are actually getting quite a bit more dense uh, in terms of there being a ton of enemies around and stuff. I'm going to grab a drink real quick. Alright, we're back. So all the keys are revealed. Like I said, at this point, if you wanted to get 100%, you'd have to go back through all the levels and grab the keys and all that. But we are not going to. Uh, I think, yeah, we're pretty close to the end of the first world here. Only a few more levels. Then we can start getting on to the fun stuff. I mean, this is fun too, but the, you know, real, uh, kind of more difficult stuff, I guess. Another card down there. Carts are generally hidden uh, in places where you kind of have to go off the main path. I might get one of them every now and then and kind of skip the perfect just to kind of show off because, you know, they do get harder as they go along and they sometimes have different music as well, so I'll switch it up every now and then. I think I'll skip the alternate path this time and just go through it normally. Just to get that out of the way. It doesn't really matter. I'm probably gonna have to do both anyway. Oh, that was, whoops, <laughs> that was real bad. Uh, what? Oh, the alternate, oh, duh, that's the level I just did. The alternate exit would have taken me to the key vault, so hey, it would have, <laughs> probably would have actually been bad. Oh, I guess we're not too away from the boss. I guess there's more after it. I, I mistook that little yellow space for being uh, for being the boss, but I guess it's not. I don't know. We might just we might kind of skip the uh, side paths and uh, for the you know for the sake of varying things up a bit, uh, just kind of make our way through. 
got these trampoline pads to bounce on. I don't like these. Uh, they're okay, but uh, we actually come across ones that move later, and I run into them so much, like I jump too early, or if I jump too late and jump over them, you know, that, that's bad too. There's a key. We find a lock later on, which we should, so we can unlock it and get a new costume. run into it to unlock it. it. Looks like this might actually keep me from getting perfect, too. I'm not seeing any gold bars up here. Yeah, I guess it did, huh? That doesn't happen often. I would have figured they would have put gold bars up there, but... Oh well, doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna go back for it. Yeah, let's look at costumes. We haven't, we've unlocked a few. I haven't been looking at them at all. Uh, wow, looks like Beat Trip, I guess. Okay, Purple Swan here for Command Girl video. And, uh, oh, we're actually getting costumes for characters we don't have. That's interesting. Uh, let's switch over to Command Girl video for a while here. Let's go with the Purple Swan. Yeah, that that is one of the best parts, is the fact that everything you do uh, goes with the music. Just, you get in you get in sort of this trance where you're just you know you're just listening to the music and just you don't even really look at the obstacles on screen too much it's more like you're just hitting buttons to the music and it, it translates into this movement on screen it's pretty neat so we've got these big blocks that are coming at us now that we have to hold forward to block you can also actually hold to the left which is interesting it's only it only really makes sense for one stage later on. But these blocks are actually pretty cool because they make a noise when you hit them and then they also explode like a measure later and then make another sound then, which is pretty cool. Oh, I missed that gold. Oh well. sounds great. I love it. The blocks are probably my favorite part because of the extra sound they make. They can actually get pretty complex with the rhythms. It sounds pretty cool. Oh. Yeah, isn't it a great tutu, though? I mean, I unlocked it. We gotta go through the trouble of wearing it, right? Alright, so this, uh, there, this might be the level where we can unlock the next character. I'm not sure, uh, it will tell me, I believe. Yep, a new friend awaits, so when you see that, uh, you can actually unlock a new character, which is cool. Oh, that was really good. That, <laughs> that rhythm there, that was really tight. I took just a second to glance over at the chat. That was a mistake. All right, no, no chat, no looking until we at least get to a checkpoint. Truth is, I just wanted to hear that again. <laughs> what I mean like you can just sit here and just listen to it and just watch the gameplay it's it's hypnotizing
This is a cool section. <laughs> I like that quite a lot. Is it two or three seconds ahead? I, I kind of calibrated it a little while earlier. Uh, I set a delay on it. Yeah, actually, it does look like it's more behind now. Um, I mean, I can fix it, but yeah, like Angelic Dirt said, I would have to restart the stream. Um, which I can do. The local recording actually wouldn't be affected because that's still going separately. Actually, I would have to stop that too. Um... Yeah, I mean, I don't want to have to, like, append them later, so I'll just keep that in mind. I'll just try to stagger, like, if I want to talk about anything that just happened, I'll try to stagger it a little bit. Alright, now i got to get the real path on this one. We also unlocked a new character, which I should have used, but I did not think about it. Yeah, it looks like for some reason it's, I calibrated it earlier, like yesterday, uh, and I put a little bit of a delay on, but it looks like it's way more behind now than it was then, so, eh, I don't know. I mean, the problem just comes from the fact that I'm uh, the capture card. Most capture cards you use, um, especially for HD stuff, kind of come with a delay. Uh, what appears on the monitor actually happens a few... Wow, I missed that gold piece. That's weird. Uh, actually happens uh, like a little while after, you know, what actually happens on the TV. Of course, I'm looking at the TV, so uh, I kind of have the live feed, I guess. Also, sorry if you are saying something in chat and I'm not getting to it. It's not really a good opportunity to look away while I'm actually in the middle of the level, so... Yeah, the 10-10-2 uh, the remakes are good. They are final... F oh, I haven't played 10-2 and I'm probably not going to because that game is garbage. But um, the 10 remake is good. It's Final Fantasy X, but in HD, for the most part. Um, I was telling someone about it earlier. The PS2 roots definitely show through a little bit here and there. So you just, you know, kind of have... Oh, I forgot to switch characters again. Uh, you just kind of have to uh, deal with that in places. But, like, the main characters look good. Uh, the menu stuff looks good. And, you know, other than that, it's Final Fantasy X. So it's kind of hard to complain. Uh, I, I just quickly glanced and saw someone saying I wonder if they could hook a capture card up to an arcade machine. I don't know the logistics of how arcade machine video gets outputted. Um, it, you know, it has to go to the screen somehow, but in terms of what, like, connections are used and all that, I really don't know. I've never actually looked inside of an arcade machine, but uh, I imagine it is probably possible to split that video signal somewhere and uh, somewhere along the way and get it out to a capture card. You know, it has to be doable. Hey, you'd have to ask someone that's really into arcade machines, and those people are out there actually set up their own and all that stuff so I'm sure the, I'm sure Google might actually hold some uh, some wisdom there all right let's just go ahead and go to the boss I'm gonna skip that other level on the side we're gonna switch characters though uh, our next character is Uncle Dill and he's got some interesting costumes I like this one a lot so <laughs> we're gonna go with that it's always fun playing as a running pickle you know in a hat and overalls so this is the first boss. Uh, there's a boss at the end of every world. I don't know that we're going to finish this game. In fact, we probably won't, considering I'm going to most of the levels and getting perfects and stuff. Uh, it would take, like I said, a quote-unquote speed run is like, um, is like two and a half hours. So <laughs> uh, the chances of us finishing are pretty low. But uh, the bosses are pretty cool. 
Uh, they each have kind of their own little mechanic. This one we're just running away from. All we have to do is dodge uh, the little cannonballs that he shoots out. If you look really close, they actually have an eye and teeth on them, like a, a sinister mouth. So. At this point, we just wait for the springboard and then spring up when we get there. I'll run into it and basically repeat this a few times. They're simple, but uh, it's kind of a nice little change. It's the same mechanics, just kind of done a little bit differently, you know? And of course, the difference between uh, difficulties, like, um, I don't relish this fight. Oh, it's really bad. Uh, the difference between difficulties on the boss fights are just like he shoots out more projectiles, you know? That one was pretty good. So this should be the final one. Uh, no, I have not played any 3DS games because I do not own a 3DS. Yeah, like anyone who does arcade machine repairs probably knows enough uh, about the inner workings that... Uh, oh, and also, I love the way he hits the bullseye. That's so good. Um... Yeah, anyone who knows the inner workings like that could probably give you an answer. Oh no, now I've opened the gate for terrible pickle puns. So, let's uh, let's move on to the next world before things get too bad. The Emerald Prime. And the music changes too. It's very slightly, it's like the same tempo and everything, but, you know, if you pay attention you can hear it. So we've got a cutscene here. Again, in a fishy predicament, our daring friend cools it off and waits for this cetaceous old saw to sing into the Emerald Brine. The writing is so good. I like it. So now we get kind of a facelift on the environment. Nothing else is really there. Now we can dance. Yes, this is the best thing. Get extra points for dancing. Of course, the downside is you can't actually input any other commands. So, of course... Uh, dancing is the way to get all the top scores. Uh, basically, that's what the high score runs are. It's trying to squeeze out every little dance that you can everywhere. Oh, somebody... Somebody was spamming. What did you do? Get one warning. I don't know what you did. You'll have to tell me what you did. I configured Mubai. I don't know how strict he is on spamming, so... You know, if, uh, if you feel it was unfair. I think it's like a 10-second warning or something, so... Oh yeah, caps lock will do that. It, it detects too many caps uh, in a row, so yeah. I don't know if you can kind of hand pick like what kind of you know uh, spam filters it uses. You can to an extent, but in terms of that, just general, does it detect caps or not? I'm not really sure. I didn't get the key. That's what happens <laughs> uh, if you do not have the key and you try to unlock the lock. You just run right into it. See you there, Damon. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, unfortunately, we have to take the lower easy path this time. This level, uh, this, like, world in general actually really reminds me of Donkey Kong Country Returns. Uh, the beach world in that, it looks, like, so similar to me. Nice. Yeah, alternating caps are fine, I believe. It's just if there's a bunch of caps in a row. I don't even know what the... I didn't program it. I don't know what the exact number is or how that works. Yeah, and links uh, will be deleted. I don't know about the warning. Um, everything except YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. I think that's it. I whitelisted a few domains just out of, you know... For the, for the heck of it, I guess, because YouTube links are probably okay. Just don't abuse the privilege, I guess. Yeah, that's, 
I don't remember which. I probably played DKCR first and then this later. But uh, it, they just, it reminds me of it so much. It's like the same colors and everything. Another retro card down there. Actually, I'm going to bonk. That's what it's called when you run into it. They, they call them bonks. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just get that. And we'll do another retro level for fun. Oh, I missed it again. I forgot where it was. There we go. Oh, again, sorry. I know I'm two or three seconds ahead, so... <laughs> Spoilers, I got it. Banjo-Kazooie, yeah, the second level... Treasure Trove Cove? Is that right? It's been a while since I played that. Oh, yeah. I, these are a little bit tricky, and you only have a limited number of lives to do it. Cartoony Contra, I guess that's close enough. Oh, now we can slide and jump, so we can lay down in the air. You can also lay down mid-air, which is in switch between them, that's kind of funny. I want to at least beat World 3. That may be where we stop. Uh, but I really like the the third world is actually my... Well, the, not, not like the third world in, you know, in real life, but the third world in this game uh, is probably my favorite one. Again, we'll just skip the alternate path so we can get there a little quicker. If you think jumping while lying on your back is tricky, uh, you should try jumping in the air, lying on your back, and standing back up again repeatedly three times before you hit the ground. Then again, I don't know if pickles just have more agility than the rest of us, but uh, I've never seen a running hillbilly pickle, so, you know, I can't really be the judge. Facebook Oculus Rift stuff. Two billion dollars! That is a lot of money. I don't know too much about it other than that. I don't follow industry news super closely. But obviously it's big enough that I've at least heard of it. In terms of what'll happen with it, I don't know. I'm, I'm not that involved in the industry to really have an opinion. Let's do another retro level. It's there, so <laughs> might as well. Plus, I really like the retro levels.
Yeah, it, it's. I, I guess we just don't really know yet what Facebook really wants to do with it. Uh, I think the big concern is that the video game aspect of it is going to kind of fall by the wayside as they try to do, you know, Facebook integration or uh, other kinds of social media, kind of virtual reality stuff that way, which is kind of weird using an Oculus for that. But uh, I, I think we just don't really know what they're doing with it. But um, maybe once we do, we'll be able to kind of better generate an opinion. Oh, yeah, and we've got these things here where we've got to uh, hit the buttons as we go by them. But I, it's just kind of one of those things where I don't really know that I have enough information uh, to kind of have an opinion about it one way or another, other than it's crazy that it was bought for so much money. And this is a little tricky. There we go. Virtual Yahtzee, why stop there? Why not Virtual Farmville, you know? People still play Farmville, right? That's, I don't know, I feel like I'm out of touch with that whole... that whole sphere of gaming. Because I just started blocking everyone <laughs> that would send me that kind of crap. So, uh, I'm not sure what people are playing nowadays. No, I haven't played the Stick of Truth, and I'm probably not going to, uh, because I just don't like South Park. So, you know, whatever the game may be in terms of its RPG mechanics, the, I just could not wait through the South Park uh, to be able to get to it. Farmville 2, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. Uh, Farmville VR, Farmville World Championships, I don't know, man. And some of the enemies and the obstacles like change color a little bit or change appearance. Uh, like the blocks in this world are purple. They, they kind of change colors so they don't really blend in with the background, which, you know, I definitely appreciate quite a lot. Because the green, like the light green that it was before with this light blue, I feel like that would definitely kind of blend together for me a little bit. Yeah, is there a Farmville Angry Birds? Is Angry Birds even still popular? I feel like if it's something I heard about last year, it's not popular anymore. That's just... I don't know. That's just how I feel about <laughs> where that industry probably is. Yeah, like, the RPG stuff looked okay. I checked out a few videos of it. Um, especially, I think, Giant Bombs were probably the... They did a quick look of it that I probably got the most information from. And, like, the RPG stuff seems okay. It's kind of, like, it's kind of costume questy in that regard. You know, kind of the... Having the action you have to execute in order to get a better attack. But uh, the South Park, man, I just... There's no way I would be able to <laughs> deal with all of that. And, uh... The, the RPG mechanics itself probably isn't enough. Uh, because South Park, I was kind of okay with it at one point. Now I'm just kind of like, I don't really care, you know? So I wouldn't really want to just, like, focus on that specifically. This is kind of a cool section. See, this is, it's just something good to have on in the background, right? 
just the music and uh, kind of how all the action's going. It's just a nice, relaxing. That's that's what I really liked about it because that's what I pretty much used it for. So you know, come home from work and like, man, I just want to sit down and play Run or Two for a while. You know, just listen to some music from it and interact with it. Really good game. I recommend like. If you like what you're seeing, you know, what you see is what you get in a way, but, I mean, if you like what you're seeing, you're gonna like what you're playing. It's, it's really good. Yeah, well, I imagine if you actually like South Park, the game is probably pretty good. Like I said, the RPG mechanics looked pretty solid, and, uh, you know, it looked like a pretty decent-sized world and all kinds of different side quests and stuff, and the, uh, you know, the amount of character creation... Uh, the, the, the amount you can customize them and stuff like that all looked actually pretty good uh, if you like the show uh, it seems like it's a pretty good game so I, I just chalk it up to personal taste really you know I wouldn't call it a bad game it's just you know that's that's not really up my alley so to speak no the stop signs are happy they did their job they're always just kind of smiling oh actually I don't know, they kind of have a neutral expression. They're like, oh well, you just kicked me and now I'm flying into the foreground. Come to think of it, do stop signs, do stop signs feel? I think this is the real question here. You blow by one in the street, well you hurt its feelings because you didn't obey it. Yeah, everyone and their brother was streaming it, everyone was doing videos, everyone was doing walkthroughs. That's the thing with big new releases. I mean, that's what everyone does. Uh, right now, it's probably still Dark Souls 2. Uh, I don't really know that anything else huge has come out since then. Maybe Infamous Second Son, uh, Metal Gear Solid, Ground Zeroes, stuff like that. I find tons of videos of that everywhere, so... You know, that's why I tend to kind of stay away from the new releases for the most part. It's like, you know, I'm just kind of throwing one on top of the pile, even if I really liked the game. So I'd rather just wait a while and kind of give it my own little spin. Oh yeah, this is the uh, first part where we just kind of run along on these little sliding things. So we can go up or down. Uh, if we just press down to go down, of course up to go up. So it's kind of interesting. It's pretty simple, but it makes for kind of cool situations like this where you can just hang underneath the rail and let things go above you. Oh, uh, again, I'm, this is this is a bad time to uh, to look at the chat while I'm trying to do all this stuff. Yeah, you know, like LPing new games by itself. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of kind of stigma attached with it from sort of the old guard, I guess, uh, in terms of LPs. But it's, if you do it, fine. If you do it for the right reasons, fine. You know, like, um, it becomes kind of a distinction where if you're just doing it to try to bring people to your channel, if you're just kind of using the game to, you know, give your own popularity, then you're kind of a jerk. And I kind of wish you wouldn't do that. I mean, I wouldn't stop you if I could, but... Um, you know, if you, uh, on, a, on a conceptual level, you know, if you're just wanting to play it, to play through it and give some commentary, then great. I mean, you know, more power to you, but uh, it's finding that out there, especially in today's kind of let's play climate, if you want to call it that. It might be a little tougher than you think. But, you know, in general, hey, you know, people can do what they want, so uh, if they enjoy making videos like that and people like watching it, then great. You know, <laughs> obviously, they're more popular than me, so I guess they figured something out, but... Yeah, and blind stuff, you know, it's kind of the same way. Um, it's, you know, if, if they're just doing it because, like, well, it just came out and I just got back from the store, we're going to play through it blind. You know, but blind playthroughs on their own could also, you know, they fill a certain other niche um, for, yeah, so sometimes it can be frustrating if someone doesn't know what to do. That's kind of the risk. Uh, when you start a blind LP, but if you can handle it tactfully, you know, if you do some tasteful editing, if you, um, you know, set limits on how much you're going to just sit in one place, 
then sure, you know, it's fine. It can be entertaining as well. So I think it all just depends not so much on really what you do, just kind of the attitude you take when you do it and sort of what you're trying to accomplish, you know? Of course, you know, I'm, I'm no authority on Let's Play or video making anyway. I, like I said, people can do whatever they want, and I wouldn't stop them if I could, but just just my, my personal take. My stream, after all. I exercise the authority here. I love these little punch robots. These things are great. They just float around and punch at things that come close. I want to know where I can get one. Oh, that's great. I love the way he slow walks in the air. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, I mean, if you want to say blind LPs ruin the... Uh, I guess you're talking about for the person playing it. I figured you were talking about the person watching it. Like, well, that case, just don't watch it. But it can be a different, you know, it's just a different experience. People like to experience different ways um, of going through it their first time. So, you know, if they want to share their first time with an audience, hey, why not? Just, just understand that, um, you know, you should generally just conceptually hold yourself to at least some standard of quality a little bit. Um, but, you know, otherwise, have fun. Go nuts. I would also make terrible blind LPs, and that's why I don't do them. Because I spend a lot of time screwing around the first time I play a game trying to find things and uh, just doing different stuff, you know? The music sinks, and it's the best. There's, like I said, there's just something about this game that it's just hypnotic. It's mesmerizing. I just can't look away while I'm playing. Well, I can to, to read chat, but you know what I mean. Punch robots. There's so many of them. They could, like, start a little country... Punch robots. Where do they get all the boxing gloves? I want to know. Oh, that's so close. It's got the bullseye. Good thing I'm not caring about that sort of thing, otherwise, I'd have to retry a lot of these. You can also tell I'm skipping, like, pretty much all of the side levels and stuff. Because I'm just, you know, we're just playing, we're just having fun. I'm not too worried about trying to do all of it. We're actually just about finished with the second world because I've been skipping all the side levels. Oh yeah, this is the one that has the big trampolines. Which are kind of hard to tell, that's one of my only complaints. Uh, is that the big trampolines can be kind of hard to tell from the little ones, so it's hard to know exactly how far you'll bounce. And no, I do not box, but if I had a boxing robot, I would probably learn to box so I can play with my boxing robot. Them. There's so many. Oh, I've been getting costumes left and right, too. I'll look at them after this level, I think. See if we got anything interesting. This also means, like, since I'm skipping the side levels, I'm not really unlocking the characters, so... Uh, that's just, you know, that's kind of the nature of things. But, you know, I kind of like the pickle, so... Yeah, it just comes down to personal style. Um... You know, I, I try to make kind of at least semi-informative videos that show decent gameplay, at least. But if you're one of the people 
that it just it just depends on why you're making LPs, you know, if you want to just kind of use it as a place to uh, just, you know, just get off the things off your mind and um, all that stuff, then maybe a blind LP is fine just to kind of screw around while you're, you know, playing a game and talking about stuff like, hey, cool, you know, <laughs> those are the videos you want to make. Great. And it's just for me, that's not really the type of stuff I want to make. So uh, the, the blind LP doesn't really lend itself to the type of style I wanted to create, really. I would kickstart boxing robots, and not rock'em sock'em robots. Don't don't try to pass those off as boxing robots. I mean, real boxing glove robots. See, so we've got we've got like three or four people. We can totally pull this off if we can find someone to build it. Oh no, I took the easy path. Oh, that's boring. I just saw the spring and went for it. Yeah, this is also kind of an interesting level. It's got a bunch of, like, shipping crates and stuff in it. Uh, the, the track back there. I, I almost feel like it has to be a reference to Donkey Kong Country Returns, right? Like, the minecart track in the back there? But it's probably not. Um, Double Dragon... If you're talking about Neon, no. Uh, it had the little, like, flying robots that would sort of spin and run into you. Uh, I wonder, actually... Oh, I don't have enough gold to get up there. I'm gonna see... Actually, I don't really even care about unlocking the, new, the other characters. Because I don't actually really like the character in this one anyway, so... Rebel Bell. Nice. In the buff. It's just... It's basically, he just has no shoes or wristbands. It's just... <laughs> just him. That's kind of weird. Uh, let's, let's switch it up. Let's go with this little strange glasses set here. Yeah, like, it's probably not a reference. It's just, it's just really similar. It's kind of the weird coincidental way. I just realized I have not been dancing at all. <laughs> I haven't even thought about it. I've been just talking about stuff and playing the game, you know? Battletoads. It said don't mention Battletoads, so guess what? Battletoads. It's one of those games that, like, it's a classic, and, like, everyone, you know, likes it because it's a classic. But when, when you kind of take a look at it, you realize, like, dude, that game is kind of really hard and kind of has some problems. <laughs> so it's, it's one of those things that, I guess, kind of benefits from rose-colored glasses a little bit. But, all right, time for the boss of World 2, and then we can get to my favorite world. And once we finish that one, I don't know, we might be done. Uh, we've been an hour and 15 minutes going here, so it'll probably be roughly two hours by the time I finish that. Maybe. Actually, it'll probably be less than that. Yeah, so this boss is kind of the same thing, except uh, we're going to be on this rail thing, and we just have to avoid out what he, sh what, what he shoots out, rather. Jump over the little shape charges there. This one can be a little bit tricky. He kind of tries to fool you sometimes. Uh, like, he'll shoot one low when you're kind of, like, on top, and you can go ahead and dodge it, but it looks like it's going to hit you, and you end up hitting it, and it's it can be a little bit tricky, actually. I guess just the angle they take.
Cool. It's going pretty well so far. And that did it. Cool. I, I usually get hit there at least once, but I guess that did pretty all right. It is. like that, That's kind of what I was saying earlier. It's a great game to just zone out with. Yeah, it had a PlayStation release. Uh, like I said, I think it was on 360. Downloadable, probably. And it's also on Steam, of course. The Super Nature. Oh, man. I... Commander Video finds himself in a territory in. unbound by the laws of science. Familiar yet foreign, a place only the innocent can see. The Super Nature. <laughs> I just had a little bit of a cough earlier. I hope I muted my mic in time. <laughs> I guess I'll find out, won't I? Uh, yeah, the first game, I believe, did have bosses, but they weren't really anything super special. I know, like, especially the final boss, at least, was basically just running over rooftops, pretty much. Yeah, this is a really cool level. The stuff in the background is awesome. Uh, the tree in the background that looks kind of dopey is probably my favorite background object <laughs> in the game. I love that guy. He's seen some stuff, man. He really has. And the music is really good, too. Um, the, I think it's the second stage, especially like when you get the first cross item. Uh, the, the music always sounds really good. But I like the way this, like, the whole level looks, too. It's a little bit darker than the first two. It's a different theme, so it varies things up pretty well. I've gotten bad again at that. It's one of those things where you can get decent at it for a while, and then you try to do it too much, and you just your performance starts going way downhill. Also, the, like this menu music is really good too. Oh, look, there I am, number four. You'll actually see me on a list. I don't know if I've been, I haven't been paying attention. But, uh, you might start seeing me on some of these. Yeah, it was that stage of the music that I really liked. I saw the cart down there. Yeah, it is jazzy. That's that's what's really good about it. Uh, I saw the cart, and I tried to go down and get it, but I had jumps, and things just didn't work. You can't second-guess yourself in this game, you know? I just totally missed that. I was not paying attention.
I ah, missed a few gold blocks there, but oh well. <laughs> it doesn't really matter in those levels. But I definitely, I really do like the retro levels as well. There's 25 of them. They vary a little bit. That one was kind of more of like a jumping one because there were no enemies or anything. Those could be kind of fun. But uh, yep, there I am at number four again. Uh, I don't stream often, uh, at least I haven't to this point, but, um, yeah, I, I told some people beforehand that I would probably address this, but you may have noticed my, uh, if you follow my YouTube channel for the last few months at least, uh, my video uploading rate is like one or two per month, <laughs> which is pretty bad, so, um, you know, if, if things, if things keep kind of in that same general direction, I'm gonna try to start streaming some more. And uh, might actually set up kind of a semi-regular thing where we just take a long game, like some RPG or something, and just sit down for, you know, a few hours, maybe a couple times a week or something, and uh, just, like, play through it that way. I, I don't know, I don't really have any details or anything yet, or even if that's going to be a thing, but uh, it just seems like, in terms of videos, editing has kind of become a little bit of a choke point. Again, like I said to people before uh, the stream started, so... Um, I don't know, it's just this kind of thing, you can just sort of stream and play the game and talk and then at the end I can just upload the video, you know? Like, the editing part seems to be kind of the part that's holding me up uh, a bit. So, uh, we might do this more often because it's just a little bit easier in the post-processing stage at least. So, um, you know, to that end we might pick kind of a, some kind of RPG or something and just play through it, uh, you know, a few times a week or whatever and see how that goes, see where that gets us. But. You know, again, nothing specific yet. I still haven't worked all that. I'm actually taking a vacation next week. I'm just taking the week off work and doing nothing. So, uh, you know, I'll have some time to figure that stuff out. But, you know, in the meantime, I thought we'd at least uh, try to start things up. You may have known, you know, I've upgraded the presentation a little bit. Uh, I kind of did a little intro segment that you won't see on YouTube, but the people who were in the stream early saw it. Uh, it was just basically a screen with music, so, you know, you're not missing anything, but just kind of awaiting people entering the stream type thing. So I've tried to kind of upgrade it a little bit, of course, with the chat uh, and all that, you know. So now, I, I do plan to try to stream some more, uh, at least as long as videos are at least a little bit slow, you know. What are we doing? Bad mouthing Proton John over here? Uh, I mean, say what? I don't. I don't know anything about the guy's videos because I haven't watched anything in years. I remember he used to do a bunch of like Mario ROM hacks, but that's all I really know. Um, but you know, say what you want about the guy, but the dude's been around. Like you know, he's he's. I would call him old guard in terms of let's play at this point. And you know, he does stuff that he enjoys doing. So you know, like <laughs> to that point, it's. Uh, it's kind of hard to really, you know, uh, chide anyone too much on it in terms of videos being personal preference, of course, but... Nope. <laughs> well, that <laughs> that wasn't too good. I'm trying to reach out. Yeah, I, in terms of his videos, like, I don't really know anything, but... And one of those guys has definitely been around for a long time, so, you know, I, I give props to that, at least. Yeah, upload schedule. Uh, okay, so I, I didn't know. I just I just kind of saw the name real quick, but uh, in terms of Earthbound, yeah, that, that's also what I was going to talk about. Um, I don't know if you really want to call it on hold or <laughs> like what status you want to give it. Um, but again, it's kind of the videos thing, and editing on Earthbound takes the longest out of most projects I've ever done. So. Um, I'm still, I still want to get to them when I can, it's just really the only time I get to record too much is on weekends, so, you know, if I don't really get a chance then, and then during the week I gotta work, 
and if I don't really feel up to editing at that point. It can be kind of a slow process, which is where we're at right now with it, so. Um, but I do want to keep going with it. They may just be kind of few and far between, I guess, like they have been, but, you know. Yeah, Revengeance was a fun one. Uh, it didn't take too much editing because it's kind of action-oriented and was pretty straightforward, and I got decent at it. So I didn't have to retry stuff too often. Yeah, Chugga's sixth anniversary. He's been around for a while. I figured he would have actually been around for longer than six years, actually. Because my fifth year is going to be... Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, if you get uh, kind of wrongly targeted by Moobot, let me know what you did. And um, just like what message you were trying to send. But... Um, But yeah, my five-year LP anniversary or whatever, if you want to call that LP birthday or something, uh, is in June this year. So I don't know if at that point I can call myself one of the veterans or not, but <laughs> um, it's it's been a while. It's been a long run, and things have gotten weird, and things have gotten crazy, and things have gotten way bigger than I ever expected they would. Uh, you know, I, I guess both on my end and just in general, the fact that there are LPers with hundreds of thousands or millions of subscribers, you know, is kind of just absolutely insane from where it started out. No, oh, I missed the gold because I'm, <laughs> I'm halfway reading chat. I'm just kind of talking with this in the background, you know. Maybe not exactly what I intended for this to be. Oh yeah, this is a great level because here comes the, the best thing in the background ever. It's Bigfoot and he's hopping along with us. I love this level. This is probably my favorite level in the game just because of that. Bigfoot's so cool, man. Look at him just strolling down there. And he climbs up and says hi right at the end. Yeah, it's like I said, John's been around for a long time. I don't know that I'd call Chug a Midgard. I think he's been around long enough that I would... I mean, he was around, you know, when I started, he was big at that point. So, you know, it's kind of... You, you kind of have to respect that, at least. Yeah, I don't... Again, I haven't watched his videos. I don't watch a whole lot of videos anymore, in general. But... Uh, just the fact that, you know, he's been at it that long. Obviously, he loves what he does, so... It's like, you know, I can't really say anything bad about that. Oh, I tried to dance. Yeah, Legend of Legea, which I still get slack on all the time for saying it that way. Everyone's like, it's Legaya, that's the way you're supposed to say it. Like, you're probably right, but that's the way I always said it as a kid, so it just stuck. Yeah, that one was a lot of fun. Uh, again, it was an RPG, so it required a lot of editing, but it was one of those games that I, I have a real soft spot for, and that the people who played it generally remember it fondly, but there are also a lot of people who just never got around to it, and that PlayStation era of RPGs had some really good stuff come out of it. Yeah, Legends 2 was interesting because that I didn't, I don't actually own a copy of Legends 2. I was actually borrowing that the whole time from a friend, because Legends 2 is expensive buy a copy on Amazon it was like 70 bucks or something at the time I actually have a friend who owns it and I borrowed it from him <laughs> so I, I used his disc for the LP yeah Skies of Arcadia was also I've got a because that was you know obviously that's my biggest project by far uh, longest in terms of video length and all that uh, not in terms of video count, I don't think, but in terms of video length, definitely. Uh, the fact that I ended up getting Vice the Legend at the end, that's the first time I'd ever got, like, I'd never even gotten that on my own, just outside of recording, so uh, that was really cool when I saw it. I'm really happy with that. I just wish I didn't read dialogue. Like, that's kind of a big thing. Uh, don't, don't bring up Yoshi's Island, please. I tried to save at least some dignity here. Um... Yeah, the people, it, it's its a divisive issue in terms of reading dialogue. I used to do it all the time, and now I don't. Um, 
I don't know. It's just one of those things where over time I've grown to like not reading it uh, because it lets me say more. Uh, it lets me get in the comments I want to get. And as I'm like, if I watch an old one back and I'm like, dude, stop reading it. I can read it myself. I don't know. A lot of people are like, you know, I like when you read it because it means I don't have to put as much effort into it. So it's just one of those things where like, I don't think I can please everyone either way. So I just kind of went with um, what I wanted to do. And, you know, uh, whoever likes it, likes it. And whoever doesn't, doesn't. I can't really help that. Oh, <laughs> I'm just reading chat at this point. I've got to actually play the game here. Wait, what are we... People are... I haven't seen anyone making fun of me again. I can't really keep up with the uh, chat too much right now, but I think I saw Mother 3 in there. Of course, that's always a classic. Uh, not that I'm calling like my LP a classic, but I mean the game in terms of it was probably my favorite one to do. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's just kind of a... Some people like to kind of... Oops, I dropped my controller. Oh, there we go. Some people... Um, yeah, like some people liked the reading because they were just kind of doing other things. And uh, some people preferred to just kind of, you know, get absorbed in the game themselves. It's kind of just... It's a coin flip. I'm gonna piss off some people and you know help uh, help out others so um yeah you reminded me of yoshi's island that was those were dark days oh those were so dark the video quality was terrible uh well i guess the the quality itself was all right but the audio desynced all the time uh, i talked about my cats a lot and how i still remember i remember the story because it traumatized me not the actual event but telling the story and then realizing that I told the story. One of my mom's friends brought over, had one of her friends over, and her friends brought over the dog, and the dog scared my cats, and I was mad. And uh, that's what I talked about <laughs> in a video, and it was terrible. But it's so bad. Oh, man. But, you know, that that was, it was still during the time, I mean, Yoshi's Island was, you know, fledgling in terms of when I was starting out. Like, I did Star, which was six videos, I think, and then I did Yoshi's Island. So, <laughs> you know, at that point, I was still just kind of mimicking what I had seen in other places and uh, that kind of stuff. So, you know, it, it is what it is. It's historic. I think it's bad, but I like to leave it there just so, you know, people can kind of see where I came from and all that. Uh, the first mother, no. I'm not going to be doing the first mother game because I don't really like it that much. Um, I tried to play the Earthbound Zero or whatever. Uh, the like the English translation that kind of also made it easier. I just couldn't get into it. You know, I got like eight or ten hours or something, and just could not uh, could not get into it. So uh, sorry, but that's probably not going to happen. I was a potty mouth. Um, I didn't like I didn't swear a lot. In terms of, you know, you get people that just swear every sentence <laughs> nowadays. Uh, well, not even nowadays. People were doing it back then, too. But uh, I did swear. I don't remember. I called that bandit guy something. Uh, I think I called him a bitch or a bastard or something. But <laughs> uh, Because he had beaten me at the balloon game or whatever before. And then I won. And then I got my, uh, my just rewards. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, Mason nailed it. That's exactly. That, that's when he beat me the first time. That's what I called him. I called him. I, I said something else after I beat him later, though. I think that's what I was referring to. And I swore at uh, I swore at Zara 
in Grandia 2 when he told us we had to go get the Grana Saber. And then we got it, we went through that whole process, and he's like, ah, oh, I didn't really need it. Man, those, those were the days, man. I can't believe enough people have actually watched that to sit there and correct me on what I said, like, five years ago. That's insane. It's cool, though. Those were, yeah, those were different times. I don't know that they're necessarily better times. They were just different times. Still good today. Yeah, I don't know if the one I tried was the super easy patch of it was just an easier patch. Like I think they have to the like the random encounter rate or something like that. So, uh, and you got experience faster. But it, it was still kind of grindy, I think. Yeah, uh, the, the Going On speedrun actually did have commentary, it's not on YouTube, but uh, if you get it off of Speed Demo's archive, that that is the, hands down, the first audio commentary for anything that I ever did. Uh, it's, nowhere, it's nowhere near, like, kind of LP-ish, but, um, because I had seen other, pe other people did audio commentary back then as well, and I was kind of modeling off of that a bit. But uh, if you are interested in the first time my voice was ever put on the internet, uh, that would be the place to go. If you download it and play it with a player like VLC or something, you can switch to the second audio track. Yeah, and Grandia 2 was interesting, um, because it was the first time I ever, I think, tried to capture a console. And it looked really bad because I had a lot of ghosting at the beginning and I couldn't figure out how to get rid of it. And what I did actually added more ghosting. So <laughs> it ended up looking kind of bad at the start. But Yeah, like if I were to go back and do it again, I would mix the music back into my commentary now that I know how to do that. But back then it was a miracle that I even managed to get my voice and send it into Nate to have him encode it. Make the second audio track and all that, because I had no idea. Back then, I still knew absolutely nothing about videos, but after doing them for almost five years, you know, you kind of learn these things. To the point where I'm live streaming to the internet with a chat overlay and, <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff. All the ghosting, there was so much ghosting. Oh yeah, the boat flew off the edge. Yeah, well, game over. I, if I had if I had the technical know-how, I would have edited it in like a game over screen at that point, and then just cut the video. But you know, again, it was way early on. just having fun with it in the background here, you know? I wasn't really anticipating it being it being like an LP reminiscing stream, but I guess that's what it turned into in the end. But this is still a really good game. <laughs> I'm, I'm just enjoying kind of playing it in the background here, you know? It's kind of hard to play in the background and still pay attention, but I guess I've just played it enough where I can sort of zone out, sort of go into a hypnotic state while I'm playing this and still do okay at least. Oh yeah, Grandia 2 also had that issue where I was playing it on a PS3 that had backwards compatibility, but the shadows were all weird and glitchy and big giant cones everywhere. It's kind of funny. But uh, I went through the entire game like that, and so I actually have a PS2 now, so I could do it in better quality, but... Uh, 
Now, I, I never owned a Dreamcast. Uh, I pretty much, I never really had any of the Sega, oops, Sega consoles uh, when I was a kid. And my cousin had a Genesis, which is where I know, like, at least some of the Genesis games that I know now from. But the Dreamcast, I never knew anyone who actually even had one, so I missed out on pretty much that entire library. And that was a really good sequence of blocks there. I like that a lot. Yes, I do still get people asking me to LP Wind Waker. <laughs> Hello, looks like we've got a few new people in. You're, you know, a little bit late to the stream. We're probably going to wrap up in the next 20 minutes or so, but uh, welcome. I have played Super Mario Sunshine, and I did not like it. I don't know why I didn't like it, but I really had to force myself to finish the game. Uh, I, w I was actually thinking about getting a Dreamcast not too long ago, like a month or two ago, I was actually looking on Amazon to see just how much a Dreamcast would cost and getting like Shenmue or something just to spend the time with. But I never actually did it. And I still might someday. Uh, no, I will not be doing Ligaya 2. Ligaya 2. I, I just, I can't break the habit even after I've had a million people tell me that it's, it's, oh man, I'm doing terribly. Tell me that it's Ligaya. I cannot break the habit. Now and then you gotta take a little break and just pay attention to the game, right? Oh, really? I ran into that? Ah, uh, I don't know about that. That was iffy. Unfortunately, this means I'm gonna fall behind on the chat. I see it scrolling over there, but <laughs> now that I have to spend some extra time with the level, some of you may have gotten scrolled off my screen. Cool little fan section. Okay, let's see. Yeah, Shinmu, I, I actually watched a playthrough of it, and it was pretty good. Uh, it looked like a game I was interested in picking up. It's kind of one of those... Um, it reminded me a lot of the Yakuza series, in a way. Just one of those, like, where everything is just kind of tedious and life simulator-ish. So, <laughs> actually, I think it looked pretty good. I don't know if I'll do any other PS1 RPGs that you haven't heard of, um, because I don't, number one, I don't know what you've heard of, but uh, I don't actually own too many anymore. My PS1 library is actually kind of slim pickings at this point, but... Yeah, I think I've played Four Swords Adventures, and I was very lukewarm on it. I didn't really have an opinion one way or the other. I think I rented it at a Blockbuster one day. Because I didn't even know it existed. It's like, wait a minute, there's a Zelda game here on the GameCube that I've like never played before. What is this? And it was okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not super attached to it one way or the other. I don't own it or anything. This is also a really cool boss. I haven't talked about it, but 
the perspective on this is really neat. It makes it a little bit tough to judge kind of where you are, but it looks really cool. Uh, yeah, see, there was I couldn't quite tell. I thought I was over the gap, but... Yeah, I tried Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs is good. I like it. I'm not super attached to it or anything, but I'm, I think it's a pretty good game. I actually have it on this PS3. Yeah, close enough. Uh, there is no Legend of Dragoon LP, so I don't... <laughs> I'm not sure what you're talking about. I don't have any plans. I, I don't plan out these things in advance. So. Yeah, it's a lumberjack bot. It's, it's sawing away the logs as you try to jump over them. Blockbuster actually does still exist. I've heard a lot of people say it doesn't, but we have a Blockbuster back in my hometown. Alright, I don't know if I'm going to go on to the fourth world. Uh, we may stick around a little bit. But uh, I think I, I may be at least finished with the game. I don't really think there's anything else I'd want to pick up. I'm kind of tired. It's been a long day. So, <laughs> full day of work and all that, you know. So, yeah, we'll, we'll field a few more questions or something just to kind of hang out for a little bit. But uh, probably around in, in the next ten minutes or so, I'm probably going to head off. I wouldn't say Blockbuster is kicking. It is at least twitching somewhat. But uh, I'm actually going to move my mic over here because I'm kind of bending Sleepy Night, I don't know, like, I I, I wouldn't mind playing it, but the, uh, the the problem with it is that it is, it's got those kills that are pretty not safe for, <laughs> you know, kind of streaming to a general audience, so, uh, I don't know, like, I, it's, it's not like I have a problem with it, it's just one of those things that, yeah, I went silent, like, I had to move the, uh, uh, the microphone a little bit because uh, I was bending over, kind of looking at the TV, so I switched it back over to the computer side here. <laughs> I'm actually bending, yeah. It actually probably cut off because I do have like a one and a half second delay uh, because I was trying to compensate for the, uh, the capture card lag, but. Yeah, the three Mario's, are, I, I mentioned my opinion on Sunshine earlier. Uh, Galaxy's pretty good, and Galaxy 2 is pretty good. Uh, 64 obviously is pretty good. So it's it's just Sunshine that I couldn't really get into. I don't know what it is with that game. If you were to ask me, I could not tell you what the problem is that <laughs> that I just couldn't get into it. But um, that's that's where I sit with it. But yeah, the, what I was saying before was that I was. Uh, I, I kind of have to turn a bit because the TV is to the side of the computer, so I had to. I moved my mic back over to my actual computer desk, so <laughs> I muted it for a second. But they got any got any quick questions, real quick? We'll hang around for another ten minutes or so. Uh, I don't want to just open the floodgates and have like a million people ask stuff, but uh, I think it looks like we got. I think X Split saying sixty-seven viewers, so. Mario Kart 64, yeah, maybe. Um, I don't know. It's <laughs> it's one of those things where like everyone knows everything about Mario Kart 64, but maybe we'll play around with it sometime. Uh, actually, I don't want to uh, announce anything because I can't promise anything, but I actually do have 
one NES game in particular that I kind of wanted to get out. It's a little bit shorter, as is the case with a lot of NES games, but... The only... Let's see, I've played two Tales games. Um, I've played Tales of Symphonia on the GameCube and Tales of Legendia on the PS2. And they were okay. Um, I don't know, they're JRPG kind of stuff. With less turn-based, I guess, but... Um, you know how it is. Like, it's alright. I mean, the story's okay. I've never gone back to them after I played them the first time, but uh, I enjoy my time with it. PS1, maybe. I don't know. Like, I said, I, like I've said before, I don't really like plan out these things, so I don't know what's coming next, what I'm going to do uh, in the future or whatever. It's just kind of, I take it as it comes, you know? Um, I just kind of play it by ear. Arkham City, again, maybe. Uh, same kind of thing. Uh, no, I will not be doing Jekyll and Hyde. I can guarantee you that. Final Fantasy, uh, yeah, I mean, I've played a lot of them. Uh, you know, 7, 9, 10 is pretty good. Um, 6 is alright. Uh, I know a lot of people like 6, but I didn't really get into it at the time. I was still a little young on the SNES to kind of get into a big RPG like that, but it's pretty good too. See a few people heading out. Thanks for coming out. I uh, hope you have a good evening. I will definitely sleep well because I'm kind of tired. Musashi Legend. No, I'm, I don't know that game. The only Musashi I know is Brave Fencer Musashi. I've heard of El Shaddai, but I don't know anything else about it other than that. Never played Kickmaster on the NES. That sounds cool, though. Um, which one, what did I play with Dave? We played, uh, was it U.S. Championship V-Ball, I think it was? And, uh, it's a great game. <laughs> it's it's a great co-op game. It's it's a great couch co-op game. Um, not really co-op, I guess, kind of competitive in some ways, but... It's a great one to have four people in a room screaming at each other for not being able to hit the stupid ball. Yeah, I never played uh, Tales of Vesperia. Uh, I didn't play any Final Fantasies with Dave, so he might be thinking of someone else. I don't know. Oh, uh, you might be actually talking about that one random stream we did. That was Final Fantasy X-2, uh, where we were making fun of the game, <laughs> basically. I think he played The Last Remnant that day as well. I made fun of everyone wearing black outfits. Yeah, that, that's the only Final Fantasy I can think of that I played with them. I didn't really play it, but... Yep, belts and zippers, that's what it was. Oh, someone got timed out again. Moobot, uh, Moobot is not afraid to bring the hammer down, man. You, got, you gotta be careful. Repeated characters and caps and all that. <laughs> what were, just out of curiosity, what were you trying to... Uh, yeah, Moobot does not allow any positive X2 talk. Uh, which one? Where are Vestalence? Are you talking about Tales of Vesperia there, or sorry, there's there's a, a fair amount of chat. I know Legend of Mana, uh, PS1, I think, but I've never actually played it. I've seen it uh, around. I actually I probably saw it at Blockbuster back in the day too, but. Yeah, uh, Rich, that's how a lot of people found me early on. I was really fortunate to kind of just get noticed uh, because I made a shirt design <laughs> back in the day for NCS, and he shouted me out on a handful of videos and stuff, so early on, definitely, I owe you know a lot of uh, the people coming over discovering me from you know instances like that, so 
Uh, I will definitely not deny that I basically just got lucky to, <laughs> to really get any sort of audience. Unfortunately, that's just kind of the way it goes, you know? Uh, Brave Fencer Musashi sequel for PS2. Hmm. I'll look it up. Look, look, look it out. Look it up. I was going to say look out for it. Yeah, I play Kingdom Hearts. Uh, it's okay. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 1 is fine. Kingdom Hearts 2 is also pretty fine. Um, and that's it. That's all I've played because I have not been interested in the rest. So. Yeah, if you're gonna get a, if you're gonna get X2, you might as well get the HD remake of it, right? That's one I'll probably never touch on that disc. I basically just bought that disc for the Final Fantasy X HD remake. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. He did name. Uh, it was I think it was Valfour, Valfour, however you say it. Oh, uh, someone asked if I was going to the next GDQ. No, probably not. Uh, I didn't go to this one. I went to the last one. It was all right. I mean, I don't really have a huge place in the speedrunning community anymore. It's kind of grown up, um, and I've kind of been out of it for too long, and it's changed a lot. So it was. I had a you know a fun time that week, but I'm not just I'm just not super active in speedrunning. So it's kind of an expensive trip to fly out there and all that. So uh, I think I'll stick to probably just watching the stream and. You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, Dave has not invited me to his wedding. I don't know when it is or where it is. Um, that would depend on a lot of things. I don't know. Flying out places are expensive. So, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll probably talk to him about it if that's, uh, if that's a thing that might happen. No, X2 was a bad game. Uh, the combat system was okay, but uh, everything else about it is just bad, period. <laughs> that is my opinion, of course. I am by no means enforcing that on anyone, but I, I think X2 is a bad game in general. It's weird because it's super divisive. Some people love X2, and some people just don't, and I'm one of the people that just don't. All right, I think we're um, probably gonna wrap it up here. I'm just doing some Q and A's, so it's it's about nine o'clock here, and uh, I've been up since like 6:30 in the morning, and I worked for eight hours, so uh, I am kind of tired. <laughs> so I think we're probably gonna end it right here. Uh, thanks guys for coming out. It's been a fun one. It wasn't quite what I expected it would turn out to be, but you know, hey, it turns out Runner Two works great for a background game, right? Had some uh, fun discussions, so. All right, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the show, whatever it ended up being. Thanks for coming out, and uh, I'll see you later. <laughs>